I've been looking forward to this one because the late night shows had a field day with Ted Cruz and good Ted, you deserve it. Jimmy Kimmel said, snake on a plane right there. Headed ironically to the very place he tried to build the wall around, Jimmy Kimmel. Hundreds of thousands of Texans are without power, and on a day when the most newsworthy landing should have been the NASA rover successfully touching down on Mars, instead it was a senator from Texas touching down in Cancun. Kimmel, while his fellow Texans were freezing with the power out, Ted Cruz did what any great leader would do when his state needs leadership most. He booked a flight to Mexico and said, Adios, amigos, Trevor Noah. Ted Cruz, no, man, you got to be bleeping kidding me, dude. Your people are literally eating snow and you're jetting off to Cancun. I'm not even mad that you were selfish. I'm mad that you were stupid. How can you be in politics for 10 years and still have no idea how bad this would make you look? What were you thinking? Trevor, I mean, seeing Ted Cruz skip town for the beach has been very frustrating for the people in Texas. But on the other hand, it's been really exciting for the people in Cancun who got to meet him in the street. Wow, bro, I didn't know that Senior Frog was a real guy. That was awesome. Trevor, I mean, I get that Ted Cruz is tired. The man deserves a break after trying so hard to overthrow the government. But that is not the time, Ted. Let me jump in here and remind you all that the impeachment was Saturday and they like wanted to go on spring break, apparently, and did. Four days later, the dude's in Cancun. Trevor. And what is even worse is that when he got caught, instead of owning up to it and apologizing, he acted like a total Ted Cruz. Trevor. Seriously, Ted Cruz blaming his daughters for this is just gross. Being a good father means putting them on a bus, not throwing them under one. Camel. Ted Cruz booked his return ticket at 6 a.m. after he got busted, but I guess we were supposed to believe he was just chaperoning his wife and kids to Mexico and was planning to come back the next day all along with a carry-on bag stuffed like a pinata. Trevor for the win. When your constituents said they needed clean water, they didn't mean go find a wet t-shirt contest in Cancun. Did you see the video that made the rounds on Twitter on Thursday? Comedian Blair Erskine pretended to be the director of communications for Ted Cruz. She began her video parody by confirming that Cruz was in Cancun. Quote, but here at his offices, we say big whoop. She did a Texas twang saying, Senator Cruz deserves to relax, unwind, unplug, recharge like you would a power outlet or his power grid's going to go out and we can't be having that. You know, that's too important. I saw that making the rounds and clicked on it. And luckily, my spidey sense was like, this cannot be real. But I wasn't sure. That's where we are in 2021. From Variety, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, you know her from Fleabag, she will take on the role of the first president of the Edinburgh Festival Fringe Society. Why? Who knows? It's a newly created role. It's an honorary one. And it will see Waller-Bridge act as a representative and advocate for the Fringe Society, the charity that exists to support everyone who wants to participate in the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. Waller Bridge said the Edinburgh Fringe has started an annual cultural revolution for decades. It's where thousands of writers, comedians, performers and artists cut their teeth and put their most raw work out into the world. Whether it's a two hander a shoebox, a gig in a van, a promenade through the streets or a mammoth musical epic. The festival is a global symbol of artistic freedom and experimentation. It relies on its audiences and it relies on its artists. I've never been now someday in the future when there's no pandemic. How do I, like, leverage this podcast into someone going, hey, you should come to our festival? That would be awesome. Scotts, get on that, will you? Phoebe also said it's where the relationship between the two is feverishly consummated. Ooh, Sometimes with great success, sometimes with awkward fumbles behind an inflatable cow, but always with unbridled passion and creativity. This is a long statement. From leaking caves to cobbled streets to the glamour of the Traverse Theater up to Arthur's seat... Locals are like, yeah, we know what those are. Johnny Mac's like, what? Did I even pronounce that right? This festival is a beating heart of an industry that has been all but crushed by the pandemic. And I'm proud to be part of the fight with the Fringe Society for its much needed survival and glorious return. I wonder what this is about. Do they feel like they just need press and she'll get it? Like, I'm not anti. I'm not hating on this. She's cool. The festival seems cool. Like I said, I've never been. But I don't know. Like, honorary president, why? Just wondering. Again, not anti. Don't write me letters. Don't tweet me at DCN Pod. You don't have to do any of that. My former co-worker, Jamie Foxx, is returning to his TV roots. Oh, yeah. I used to run the Foxhole radio station. Want me to call Jamie right now and put him on? He probably changed his number. Jamie Foxx is returning to his TV roots with a new Netflix sitcom titled Stop Embarrassing Me, Dad. Jamie will star as a cosmetic business owner and bachelor who all of a sudden becomes a full-time parent to his teenage daughter. It's based on his own relationship with his daughter, Corinne. And I will tell you personally, in real life, Jamie is very tight with Corinne. Stop Embarrassing Me, Dad! Exclamation point debuts on Netflix April 14th. 
Here's the results for last week's comedy's top dog. You guys voted between Bill Burr and John Mulaney. And the winner and comedy's top dog is John Mulaney. Pretty handily, too. So this week, John Mulaney has to take on a strong challenger. This week's comedy top dog matchup. You're going to go to the Instagram page at Daily Comedy News. You're going to vote. There's a post with a picture of this week's battle. And this week's battle is John Mulaney versus, say versus, John, stop saying verse, versus Adam Sandler. Yes, Adam Sandler. Wonderful comedian. You know him from Saturday Night Live. You know his great work in movies like Hubie Halloween. He does opera man. He sings songs in concerts and people lose their mind. He does weird voices. He hangs out with Kevin James. You know who Adam Sandler is, right? Well, this week, Adam Sandler could become comedy's top dog as he takes on defending champion John Mulaney. Go to the Instagram page at Daily Comedy News and vote. Now, listeners, if you guys had a sense of humor, you should go with the bit and you should all vote for Adam Sandler because then I will have to deal with it on the podcast and that will be funny for all of us. You hear me? You probably should vote for Adam Sandler. John Mulaney versus Adam Sandler, this week's Comedy Top Dog. I haven't plugged my show on Live by Live in a little bit. So on the Live by Live app, Live X Live, I host something called the Weekly Comedy Thing. It's the foreigner of this podcast. On the Weekly Comedy Thing, I do quick news stories, but then I actually play bits by the comedians. So say I mentioned Adam Sandler, who, by the way, is up against John Mulaney in this week's Comedy's Top Dog. I could play material from Adam Sandler or John Mulaney or any comedian. I can't do that on the podcast because rights, and I won't bore you with all that, but on that show, I can do that. But on that show, I really can only talk for a minute. I can't go on for like five minutes about something. So out of that, I was like, oh, I've got all these leftover news stories. I'm going to start a podcast to which you now are listening, and I thank you very much. So it is called The Weekly Comedy Thing. There's a new episode that I put up every Every Sunday morning, and you can check that out for free on the Live by Live app. There are also streaming comedy stations there if you want to hear some stand-up comedians. Go do that. From Time Out Sydney, it's a Dolly Parton-inspired comedy night and a hair salon. Time Out Sydney says, if there's one thing that Dolly Parton, patron saint of all things camp, and the lineup at this pop-up stand-up night have in common, it's having a remarkable crowning glory on their noggins and probably some beef with a person named Jolene. MC Brendan Hancock is the co-founder of Two Queers Comedy. He says, Some friends and I couldn't build a comedy night based on having great hair, but I don't talk to them anymore. Dolly's Comedy is taking over Mousy Brown and the other room hair salons at 68 Fovac Street in Surrey Hills. I'm telling this for like the one person who listens to this podcast in Australia. If you are in Sydney and you are hearing me, you got to show up at this and just send me a picture just to let me know this story was not a complete waste of everyone's time. But I think it's fun. Dolly's Comedy is taking over Mousy. It'll have a DJ spinning Dolly Parton classics and a lineup of entertainers who put just as much effort into tending their tresses as they do coming up with zingers. Sam Taunton, you know Sam from the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Lauren Bonner, you know Lauren from the Sydney Comedy Festival. B. Barbo Skirla and Jenna Suffern, they are two queers who walk into a bar. MC Brendan Hancock says, we lost a lot of live comedy spaces last year, so I wanted to be part of this brave new comedy world. And well, Dolly just feels right for the current climate, doesn't it? I've had a Dolly poster in my room like any self-respecting 16-year-old girl going on 27, which says it takes a lot of money to look this cheap. And if that's not my brand, I don't know what is. Tickets are 20 Australian bucks. The show is Tuesday night, February 23rd, and I know that Sydney's like 18 hours ahead, so I'm putting this in the Monday's podcast because by the time you guys are hearing it, this show might be just minutes away. 8 p.m. start if you're in Sydney. If you're in Sydney, please go to this 68 Fovo Street, Surrey Hills at Mousy Browns. From 24-7 Sports, obviously your home for comedy news, Michigan head football coach Jim Harbaugh will do anything he needs in order to make a good impression on a recruit, including even telling a few jokes. Randy Sklar was on uh, the On the Bench podcast, and he said that Jim Harbaugh once called him to get a joke to tell when he was recruiting a running back in the 2022 recruiting class. Sklar says, he texted me one time, and he's like, you got any good jokes out of the blue? You got any good jokes? I was like, uh, yeah, okay. I wrote a few jokes and I sent them to him. Just like jokes your dad could tell someone, you know what I mean? Even though he's like not that much older than us, I got to do it in a way that he could. And he did. It was so great. He's like, I'm about to talk to this running back from Cleveland or Cincinnati from 2022. I'm going to use one of these jokes. And he did. It was great. And that's your Daily Comedy News for today. Instagram, at Daily Comedy News, vote. 
Defending champion John Mulaney takes on challenger Adam Sandler. If you like what I do and you want to support the show, buy me a coffee.com slash daily comedy news. That's a large ice with caramel. Let's see how we're doing on Spotify followers as we close in on a thousand here. 992. Follow the show on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your shows. This was fun today, and I'll see you tomorrow.